In this video, I'm going to show you how you can add PostGrid to the home page of your website. If you have blog posts on your website and want to display some of them on the home page of the website, this video is for you. And this is what we'll achieve by the end of this tutorial. So if you like what you have seen and want to add PostGrid to your website, keep watching. Hello guys, this is Swadik here at Digo Pages Web, where I do web tutorials just like this one. So if you are new here, consider subscribing. That said, let's jump into the video. To achieve this post grid style, we are going to install a plugin. To do that, I go to the back end of my website. Then I go over to plugins, click on add new plugin. Under search plugins, I search for post grid. And this is a plugin I'm going to use. The post grid, short code, Gutenberg blocks and Elementor add-on for post grid by radio steam. I click on install now. It is installed. I go ahead and activate the plugin. The plugin is installed and activated. If you are not redirected, just go ahead and refresh the page again. And at the side here, you see that we have the post grid. Now, if I go to the front end of my website, I'm going to go ahead and add the post grid on the front end of my website so that it will display some of my blog posts. So I'm on the home page of my website. I go ahead and click on edit with Elementor. Inside the Elementor editor, I scroll down to the location where I want to add my new section. So I just go ahead and click on add new container flexbox. Then I'm going to go ahead and choose this one. The first thing I'm going to do is go over to elements. Then I'm going to go ahead and drag in the heading element like this. I enter latest blog post. I'll go to style, then I go ahead and center it. Next, I go back to elements and right here, you see that I have the post grid and we are getting all these elements as a result of installing the post grid plugin. Let's take a look at the grid layout. I drag it and drop it under my title. And right here, I have my post grid. Awesome. If you are finding value so far, please give this video a thumbs up. It does help me out so that the video will be suggested to more people on YouTube and also benefit more people. All right, let's continue. Take note, it comes with a title. Meanwhile, we already have our title here. So if you want to use the post grid title, you didn't need to add this title right here. After inserting the post grid widget, you have access to content settings, style and advanced. You can use all these to customize the post grid widget. The first thing we have under content is layout. At the moment, layout one is selected. Let's take a look at layout two. With layout two, you have the meta description at the bottom of the grid. As you can see, we have the name of the author, the date and the category. With layout one, everything will be on top after the title. Let's take a look. I hope you can see that. So whichever way you want it, you can choose accordingly. You will notice that layout one and layout two, they are having borders surrounding the grids. Let's take a look at layout three. With layout three, you don't see borders surrounding the grids. I want to keep it as layout one. To get access to the rest of the layouts, you will have to upgrade to the pro version of the plugin. Next, we have layout options. The first one we have here is column. At the moment, default is selected, which is in three columns. Let's drop down the arrow. Let's see four columns. So these are four columns will look like. Let's take a look at two columns. All right. So three columns is the same as the default. For this demonstration, I'm going to use four columns. I want it to be in line with my product grids right here. I also have four columns for the products going down. You can also align the text at the moment it is set to default. Let's see center. This is how centered will be right. Choosing any of these will depend upon what you want. For this demonstration, I'll just leave it as the default, which is align left. Next, we have query build. We have post source, which is set to post. You can also choose pages. Since we are talking about post grid, let's leave it as post. You can also include or exclude some particular posts by entering their post IDs here. I'm not going to use any of these. The next feature I want to consider here is limit. How many posts do I want to show at a go? At the moment, it is showing all my blog posts. I want to set it to four. 
so that the post here will go off and I'll have a lead for on top right here. Perfect. Going down, you can also perform some advanced filters. That is filtering by category, tax, author, or by keyword. I'll just leave the rest of the settings as they are. Next, I go over to links. You see that when I hover on the thumbnail, it is set as a link. Now, if I don't want to see it as a link, I'll just disable it from here. Now, if I hover on the thumbnails, they are not being displayed as links. But I think this feature is cool, so I enable it. Next, let's go over to the settings tab. This is where you can enable or disable some of the features you have on the post grids. Here we have the section title. If you don't want it, you just go ahead and disable it. We also have post title. You can disable it from here, thumbnail, accepts, and the rest of the information. You see that I've disabled all this and they are gone. But I don't think you will want to do this. So let's bring them back. For this demonstration, I'm going to disable the post accept. That is the text here. I don't really need the meta description as well as the buttons. But I want to show you how you can customize them before I take them off. So for now, I will leave them. Next, let's go over to section title. That is the title here. What text do you want to see there? This is where you can change it. I will just say blog posts. You can change the title tag. At the moment, it is set to A2. You can choose whichever tag you want. I will leave it as it is. Next, we have post title. This is where you can change the title tag if you want. You can also change the title hover underline. At the moment, it is set to default. Let's enable it. So now if I hover on the title, you see the underline. And I think this is cool. So I leave it. Next, we have title visibility style. At the moment, it is set to default. If I drop down the arrow, I can show it in one line. And this is how it will look like in one line. But I don't think you want this. You may want visitors to see the whole title. So I will leave it as the default. You can also set title length. This is where you can set the number of words for your titles. So here, if I say five, you see that here has been reduced. Maybe I want to make it three. This is how it will look like. All the titles will be limited to three words. You can also crop titles by characters. So here it is set to by words. You can also set characters. Now if I enter, let's say 10, my titles will now be limited to 10 characters, as you can see. So I don't need this, and I'll take this back to words. Next, we have thumbnail. I'll leave everything as they are here. Next, we have meta data, meta separator. At the moment, it is set to none. Let's choose dot. With this, you see the metadata being separated with dots, as you can see right here. I'll leave the default. I don't really need the metadata. Remember, I mentioned it, but I just want to show you how you can customize it, just in case you want to use it. We also have author settings, so you can customize the text right here. You see that we have before the name of the author, we have by. You can also say written by, as you can see right here. But I'll just limit it as by author image or icon. If you want image, you can set it. However, you should set your image at the back end of WordPress. Going down, you can rearrange the meta data. For instance, if I want date to be on top, this is how I do it. And you see that date is on top. Whichever way you want it, I'll rearrange it back the way it was. Finally, we have read more. That is this button right here. The first thing we have is button style. You can set it to default or text only. Let's see text only. This is how it will look like. You can also customize the text here if you want to change it. I think the default button is cool. Next, let's go over to style. This is where you can customize the colors of your text. First, we have section title. You can align it to center, as you can see, or right, as you can see. I'll leave the default. I'm not really going to use the section title since I already have the title here. Next important feature I want to talk about here is post title. This is where you can change the colors to the titles. At the moment, it is set to normal. The default is this blue color. So if I want to change it, I can choose any of my team colors. Maybe I want to use this. As you can see, next is hover. Let's see what color we can use for the hover. 
maybe this the title hover border maybe i want to maintain the same color perfect similarly you can customize the metadata that is the text here we have the category color the background color i think these colors are cool however if you want to change it you can choose any of the colors from your team or you can just set whatever color you want from here you can also customize the hover color at the moment it is set to my pink color and i think it is cool however if you want to change it you can do so from here next we have the read more button that is the button here if you need more customizations this way you can do that for instance if i want to increase the border i can increase it from here just by clicking once as you can see but one pixel is cool so i leave it as one pixel so i've just gone through to show you how you can customize some of these i don't really need the title so i go back to settings to take it off so i don't need the title i don't also need metadata as well as the read more button you see that on top here we don't have enough space so i'll just select edit container then i go over to advanced i unlink the values under margin top i'll make it 50 and bottom will also be 50. all is set i click on update let's take a look going down we have our post grids right here you can also reduce the size of your post titles as you can see here they are kind of big but i think this is cool for my website however if you want to change it you can come back to elementor just enable the post grid and the post title maybe the title tag it is set to a3 let's see h5 h5 is a bit small i think h4 will do so this is cool i update let's take a look going down this is cool awesome so that's it on how you can add post grid at the home page of your website in the meantime, stick around to watch a related tutorial from the channel. Keep watching and I will see you in the next video.